Hey guys, Linda here and welcome back to another brand new mods video for Skyrim Special Edition where we go over five of the latest mods for the last few days. Before we start, I want to update you guys a little bit. I decided that I'm no longer going to be making Fallout 4 mod videos. Don't get me wrong, I love Fallout 4 just as much as Skyrim, but the interest in the game is not really there. Not for console mods anyway. So what I'm going to do guys is I'm still going to have a daily Skyrim mod, either a brand new mod or a top 250 if I'm really struggling to find new mods because you guys seem to enjoy it and the extra time I have I'm simply going to make different kinds of Skyrim video. Some will be mod related like an upcoming mod or reviewing an individual mod. Some won't be like going over Skyrim related news but also I want to make some interesting Skyrim videos about secrets, facts, lore, that kind of stuff just because it's fun and I really enjoy doing it. So guys I'm just going to be focusing on Skyrim stuff right now as it's what most of you want to see. Anyway, the other thing I want to mention is the comment section. Now in the last few weeks, I've been only getting like 20 comments in some videos, which isn't too good. Likes are still okay, but YouTube looks at both. So I was thinking of doing something to make them more interactive. What do you guys think of a pen and paper RPG? We could play a Skyrim RPG in the comments where I write a story and you guys choose all the choices and you comment your favorite decisions and the most chosen answers get added to the next part of the RPG story. And you guys will get to pick all the stuff, like the type of character, character, the names, all of that kind of things. It could be fun, it'll be like a Dungeons and Dragons style of thing, but it will require a lot of work from me, so I'm only going to do it if you guys actually comment on it. So let me know what you think. Also feel free to ask me stuff and I will start to reply more to questions. Anyway guys, I've rambled on, let's look at some mods. Our first mod is the Khajiit themed player home, and the mod adds in a small player home to Skyrim that is just on the northern coast above Solitude. It was created for a Khajiit and its style is based on that, but anyone can actually live here as it is just a small player base and is good for playing a survival kind of playthrough. The idea behind the home is that Khajiits are cats, and cats like small cozy spaces, and so the home tries to reflect that. It comes with all the crafting and cooking stations that you need, it has a storage room, it has one bed, and it basically has all the essentials that you will need in a player house. It's a simple mod, but it's very nicely made. Our next mod is the Lakeview Manor Kitchen mod. This turns the rather useless back room of Lakeview Manor behind the fireplace into a well-equipped kitchen, leaving room on that wing of the house for either the library and the armory, featuring both a cooking pot and an oven for crafting food, as well as ample storage for items. This also removes the cooking pot from the main hall fireplace. The back room behind the fireplace must be unfurnished or else there will be item clipping and this can create a mess of items that cannot be removed if you install the mod. So be careful before installing this one, but overall a nice mod. Next up we have a mod called the Zodis Sword Pack. This mod adds in new swords to the game in different locations across Skyrim. All swords have one-handed and two-handed versions and can be changed into the two-handed versions at the forge. The ones that you find are the one-handed versions. All swords have the same stats, so it's more of a personal preference on which one you want to use. And the different kinds that you get are the Eclipse, which can be found in the Labyrinthian exterior, just beside the tower. The Gem, which is in Blackreach, near the Centurion. The Guardian, which is in Elder Gleam Sanctuary, near the tree. The Phantom is at Skyhaven Temple near the chest by the entrance, and that's one of the ones I have in the video. Valkyrie is at Robber's Gorge near the large chest from the bed, and finally you get Vengeance is at Shearpoint right next to the word wall and the chest. Overall, a nice mod. I mean, you can't have too many swords in a medieval game like Skyrim, and all of these are very high quality ones. Our next mod is the Summonable Shadowmere spell. This spell summons the Dark Brotherhood horse Shadowmere, and this works even if you haven't gotten yet from the Dark Brotherhood storyline, or you chose to destroy the Dark Brotherhood instead. You can find this spell tomb on Faringer's table in Dragon's Reach, or the table in the Dark Brotherhood sanctuary in the Falkreath one, where the stone of Berenziah is, or where the unusual stone is. It does not alter anything about Shadowmere, it simply allows you to summon the vanilla Skyrim horse whenever you want to, wherever you want to. Our final mod is the Grey's Medieval White Rum mod. Yesterday we saw a mod that altered guards and horses to be more medieval, but this mod author has more mods that are similar for towns and cities, making them more medieval. So today we have the White Run one. First off guys, this mod is amazing. I love the way White Run looks now, I do still have Project Hippie installed, which is why there are trees, but the mod actually removes the trees from the hold or replaces them with statues. So if you install this one and you don't have any trees, that is why. So what else is actually different with the mod? Well, all textures in Whiterun have been altered to look older and more stone has been implemented throughout using Skyrim vanilla textures so that graphic mods will be compatible. All guard posts have been made into guard towers and those are kind of stone kind of towers. More guards have been placed around Whiterun as well. Towers are really just for aesthetic purposes but do have an interior that you can go inside. 
Bigger walls for more realistic defences, more brick and stone is used throughout, more statues, more guards and posts, and more medieval everything. All the buildings in Whiterun are now altered, either with textures or more features, like the blacksmith now has iron bars on the outside, there is bunting in the marketplace, the biggest change is where the big tree is right in the middle, it's been replaced by a giant statue. Overall guys, Whiterun looks amazing, I thought I would have issues with graphic mods and stuff but I haven't seen any conflicts or any performance issues with this one and I can't wait to install the other Medieval Town and City mods from the same author. Also guys, I thought I should actually mention my favourite bit of this one, which is the Whiterun entrance. Instead of a small wall and those wooden posts, the Whiterun entrance is huge now. It goes all the way out past the stables, a huge wall goes right around all of it and includes the Khajiit camp and even once you leave this area here there are some extra large walls and guard towers in the farm areas just to make the entire entrance actually secure now from say like Stormcloak attacks. So it's awesome looking, it's far more immersive and yeah I'm 100% keeping this one installed. Well guys that is it for this video, if you enjoyed it leave a like, don't forget to let me know what you think in the comments about the RPG thing and I will see all of you guys next time.